I got you on this one, Coach I. Mm -hmm. It ain't nothing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The fanatic, but we keep it 100. We keep it real. That's the only way we know how to be. Talking that sports talk. You know what I'm saying? Straight out of South Carolina, Upstate, yeah. yeah. 64. Yeah. yeah, the F A N A T T I C. The fanatic, where we keep it OG. We talking sports, so I call what I see. I love the fans like they part of my team. I love the fans like they part of my team. Come rock with me. We got it jumping like it's that valley. I call my dogs out the pound, let's go eat. Turn on the fanatic, let's have a debate. Who really hold down the southeast from state to state? What team hungry gonna eat everything up off they plate? Who the next one that's really gonna step up and be great? Yeah, the F A N A T T I C, the fanatic where we keep it OG. We talking sports, so I call what I see. I love the fans like they part of my team. Yeah, part of my team. I love the fans like they part of my team. Yeah, part of my team. I love the fans like they part of my team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't forget to smash that like button, <laughs> comment, subscribe, all that. all that. The fanatic, yeah, yeah. yeah. Welcome into the Fat Act Sports Channel for sports fans by sports fans. Boy, Coach I, and we are back for another episode of Inside the Locker Room with my boys. What's going on, fellas? What's up, dog? Hey, what's up, fans? Hey, we got, we got my boy Thad down there. What's going on, Thad? How you feeling today, man? Spring ball is upon us. Hey, man, every day is a great day being a national champion. Anything else would be uncivilized. Ooh, I like it. I like it. C.A., how you feeling over there, national champ? Temperature don't change over here, baby. We still basking in the glow, and we understand what it takes and how to get there. So, you know, we're going to look at these next steps as far as spring is concerned, but Hey, man, champions all around. Hey, JB, how you feeling, man? How you feeling, national champ? Hey, man, same thing, same way everybody else done said it. Just feeling like we on top of the world, man. Be my chest still, flying high. Every time somebody look at me, I'm about seven foot, man. I'm still floating a few <laughs> inches off the ground. So I'm ready to keep on rolling with this thing, and I'm giving it to them every chance I get. That's right, that's you, right, man. That's right, man. Hey, Bring that's out. right, man. We are the Different kind of swag. We are the Different. reigning <laughs> national champions for those out there, Dog Nation and outside of Dog Nation. The reigning national champion. We are not the defending national champion. Can't nobody take it from us, in the words of Nolan Smith. Man, we're here to do a spring preview today, man. Start talking about these dogs, man. Maybe some concerns, places we ain't concerned with, injuries, things of that nature. Kirby Smart did the press conference today. We'll just start. Uh, I watched the press conference, so I'll start and give y'all the injuries. Um, so the returning player injuries, Brock, we already know Brock is out with, for shoulder. Uh, he'll be out for the spring. All these players, Kirby says, is out for the spring, but they think they'll be ready for the summer workouts and the fall camp. Uh, Rion Davis, Ryan Davis, I don't know how we're pronouncing that, but it's a linebacker. He came in. They call him Trouble. He's a redshirt sophomore. He uh, is having mm. a labrum surgery. Smile Mundon is labrum as well. Taki is still rehabbing from his ACL. Uh, Darnell Washington, as we learned today, or maybe that was yesterday, one of the two uh, had a lower <laughs> leg injury, but he'll be good to go to. Then uh, we got some mid-years that they knew about these injuries, but wait, waited till they got on campus so they could do the correct surgery for them. Uh, Bear Alexander is uh, the big nose tackle. He's getting labrum surgery. Jacob Hood, the offensive lineman, has an ankle injury. C.J. Madden, uh, it's linebacker, labrum surgery. Griffin Scroggs, offensive lineman, shoulder. And C.J. Smith, the speedster out of Florida, is still nursing his meniscus. Uh, he did talk about Eric Gilbert. Eric Gilbert is uh, performing well in the classes. He's returning to form and will be getting a lot of reps in spring ball, according to Curtis Smart. Oh, man, that's good. Uh, yeah. Especially with uh, Brock and Darnell out. So he'll be getting a lot of reps. Uh, Oscar, Del you. 
Oscar Delp, the, the uh, five-star we got at tight end, he'll be getting a lot of reps. Uh, Aaron Smith will be practicing. He is not 100%, but he will be practicing. Uh, Tate Ratledge and Tresman Marshall, they won't be practicing, but they will be participating in all the running and conditioning for the spring drills. So that's the rundown of injuries, fellas. Like I said, off camera, man, none of these are, are, are surprises. Uh, Taki been nursing his ACL since the beginning of the season. We knew about Brock last week, found out about Darnell. But like I say, all these guys will be ready to go. We know what Brock can do, so it's not like he has anything to prove. We know what Darnell can do. So I don't think the injury list sounds long, but I don't think any of them, you know, anything to worry about. Anybody got anything to say on the injury front? Let me just jump in, man. Listen, we national champions. <laughs> we tie in you. We got two dynamic guys that are out for the spring. I'm, I'm ready definitely to get to this season, and I need them when that heat gets the hottest. Don't really need them now. And it's, it's going to get these young guys and Eric Gilbert a chance to show us what he can do because or what they can do. Um, because Eric Gilbert is a tight end. Let's not get him mistaken. He is not a replacement for George Pickens. We can stop that conversation right now. Um, not even worried about it. Not even worried about these injuries in the offseason. On another topic, transfer portal is a hot topic. Uh, we have seen hey, recently. Coach. Yeah, what's up? I want to say something about the injuries. I guess okay. Dave, he kind of gave me his yeah. opinion, he kind of answered it. I was wondering, um, you know, where were we going to actually play Art? Was he going to be more uh, slot, receiver, or tight end? And did we expect Barrett to play this year? Um, I think people see five-star, they see Bear. He's about the same size as Jordan Davis. And I think, you know, we always enamored with the new shiny thing. I'm not saying he can't play. In the weight room. Yeah, I'm not saying he's not going to play this year because he looked like he can. But I think sometimes people forget because we see the current five-star, we forget about the three- and four-star that we recruited last year and the year before. Mm -hmm. We got Zion Lowe, who has got many reps uh, this past season. He he was uh, in that rotation for that front seven, uh, playing major minutes. That's the guy I think they think is going to take Jordan Davis' spot. I don't know if he's ready to be Jordan Davis, but he's the next guy up. We got... I want to say his name is Tyron uh, Ingram Dawkins. He was a five-star player in the class of 2021. So he's a redshirt freshman now. He's about the same build. So, I mean, I don't know. I think he was he was going to get a chance to get out there and compete, you know. I mean, we ain't going to hold him down. But I don't know if they was counting on it, you know what I'm saying? I'll yeah. tell you what. If, That's if just can, my if problem, I can, you know. If I can just jump in real quick. Yeah. Uh as far as the injuries are concerned, it's, it's always a concern, but I don't think we are overly, you know, distraught about the numbers or the actual personnel. And I think we actually have something that plays in our favor because we've had this uh, – Kirby's built this team to a point where success is expected, but that's included some really – uh, in-depth and long playoff runs. And when you have these long bowl seasons, that's really like an extended spring, so it gives you a chance to develop guys even though they might not get that playing time. That's really the benefit that we have. When I look at the fact that we don't have everyone available right now, I also know we did do a lot of development during that playoff run. Even though we had that number one defense, a lot of guys got a lot of good work uh, yeah. during those practice sessions against offense and defense. So uh, I understand it's a, it, it can be a detriment, but I look at it just like JV said. I mean, we got depth, and this is when that depth gets the chance to continue to get better because you never know when you're going to be called on. So, you know, I'm not necessarily upset about it at all, to be personally frank with you. Uh, but I do expect the guys that are in there to get coached up and be better. You know, what I see in the spring shouldn't be what I see in the fall out of these guys I see. So I'm excited about it regardless. And on that note, since that brought up Bear, let's talk about the defense, man. Defense is where we fill in the most holes. Now, I know on the surface, it's like we did, we are losing a lot of NFL caliber players. But as far as the number of returning starters, now, now we ain't talking about the two deep, but just the number of returning starters, we are literally in the exact same number that we was going into 2021. 
with returning starters. In 2021, we came back with four returning starters. Nicobe Dean, Jordan Davis, Devontae Wyatt, and Lewis Seen. Everybody else was just in the two deep. This year, we bring back four people. Now, in that two deep, we ain't got a lot of experience coming back. But the number of starters is the same. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I think for me personally, uh, the inside linebacker is what I'm like. What I'm looking for in the spring because that's normally who you know call out all the coverages, get everybody in line, and uh, is the leader. You know, in the past we had last year we had Kobe. Year before we had Money Rice. You know, year before that, before Money Rice, it was Roquan. So I'm like, we're gonna have to have somebody step up right there. I mean, I know we had a couple guys get some get some late playing time and some blowouts, but. I don't know. Uh, that's what I'm. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, Thad, who are you looking at on that defense, man? What position group? Uh, me personally, I'm looking at the secondary, specifically the corner. Uh, I really got my eye on Ringo. He's one of the players that I want to really watch on this defense. And the reason I really have my eye on him is because I want to see his development. Uh, he reminds me of uh, Campbell. Tyson had him. Okay. Tyson, he had he had all the physical tools, all the speed, but he just never really seemed to be able to find the ball. Always there, but never could find the ball. So he kind of reminds me of Campbell, and I want to see his development from one year to the next, especially playing all the games. So he's one of the players that I really want to watch on defense, see how he develops, and see how the coaching staff uh, tighten him up on defense. What about you, JV? So I, I'm looking at them inside linebackers that he's got his eye on Ringo to see what the next step he's going to take. Can he be that, you know, Thorpe Award candidate that we all think he I can be? It. Yeah, that, that we think he can be. What about you, JV? Um, if we're talking about the defense, man, I think I'm looking at something similar. I'm looking at that secondary, but I'm actually looking at the safety position because we got Chris coming back and we have a lot of youth on – the edges. So, you know, this might be the best DB class that George has ever brought in at one time. And these guys are full of athleticism. They're full of speed. Um, <clears throat> but you got to have that guy in that locker room. You got to have that guy on that field that kind of tamps down all that puppy play, right? You want to make sure that, you know, you are in the right position. And I think Chris is going to – I think it was hella important that he came back um, just simply because, man, I think he's going to be that quarterback on the defense that keeps them in keeps them in line, keeps them lined up correctly, and it's going to allow these guys to be able to kind of go out and play a little fast without having to think too much. And that's what I'm excited to see because we I don't think we've ever had this kind of DB play. Um, but if I'm going to if I could just bring up a like maybe a secondary um, position that I would love to be able to kind of get a little bit more insight on and have my eyes on I'm gonna be paying attention to it's gonna be that D line. Man, I I really I look I was so impressed with 88 last year, man. I just could not stop talking about this young cat. He was a man out there playing with men and I think he's gonna be even better this year. I don't think it's gonna be anything that's gonna really stand in his way. I wanna see who else gonna step up with him. I wanna see who else is gonna bring the hell and bring that pain on uh, on that field, and I'm hoping it's going to be those freshman guys we brought in that's going to step in immediately. So that's who I got. Okay. I'm hoping that Zion Log. I've been seeing some flashes out of him. I hope he can step in and be that nose tackle. That way, if he can take some of those double teams here and there, that way, you know, Jalen took some last year, but Jalen didn't have to take them all the time because he was, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. he'd be in there beside Devontae or Trayvon or whoever. It's like, I'm, I'm with you on that. What about you, CA? What you looking at on that defense? I mean, I think you got, you guys have covered most of the positions, but to be honest, you know, I'm looking at the returners. I, I'm looking at who's going to step in because it's probably not going to be a linebacker. I'm looking at Jalen, Nolan, and Chris. I'm looking to figure out which one of these guys is ready to step up and be that leader on defense. We know all three of those guys are able to make plays, but somebody's going to have to be that vocal leader. That vocal leader. Somebody's going to have to lead by example, and, and hopefully we can find that all in one guy. Uh, but the production has to be there as well. So I'm looking to see which one of the returning starters coming back. When you look at 88, when you look at Nolan Smith, and you look at Chris coming in my secondary, is he going to hold down that safety position? Because I feel like we probably have two young corners uh, 
supporting what Ringo does if he does get that job again. And I know Keely Ringo had a great play and going to go down in Georgia history, but it's going to be week to week again. I promise you, Kirby ain't going to hand it to him because of what he did last year. So he's going to have to have a productive spring and make sure he earns and locks down that spot. I don't doubt that he can do it. Dad just mentioned he's physically gifted like no other. It's about making the plays on the ball. So, you know, we'll see how it turns out. We got a lot of holes that we're looking to fill. Lucky for us, it's a lot of talent that we've recruited and a lot of guys that are ready to step up. So I'm anxious to see how these veterans handle these new faces and, and, and get this plug and play in place. Yeah, I'm with you on that because uh, it, it'll be easy to get complacent, especially for the young guys that didn't get a lot of PT that was actually on the roster. Got them a ring or go and get them a ring. I don't know if they designed it yet. And, you know, that's the I think that's going to be Kirby. That, uh, he gives a lot of leeway to his leaders on the field. But I think uh, as a whole, that's going to be our biggest challenge this year, especially during the regular season, is fighting that complacency, you know, to say this is a new team. This ain't – I mean, this – we still the same organization, but it's ain't the same team that, that won the Natty earlier on in, stay in, in January. Hey. So <laughs> it, it, it's sad but great to say, but if Ringo do get beat out, I mean that just help out with Dell. That's true. I mean, uh, like like you say that he got all the talent. He made a lot of strides throughout the year. Uh, but it says a lot about the corner that beats him out if they do beat him out. I mean, he, he can't be no slouch out there. So I'm interested to see who's going to get the other corner spot because it's a lot of guys. You know, we had two guys from this past year, Lassiter and um, – God, what was the other guy's name? Uh, Nylon Green. Nylon Green got a little got a little off-field issue, but he cleared it up and, you know, he's back with the program. But those guys came out of high school highly rated. Uh, with a lot of talent. And then, you know, we like, uh, I think JV alluded to, we brought them one of, if not the best DB class Georgia has ever brought in. You exactly. know, uh, we got Daylon Everett. He's already on campus making waves in the strength and conditioning program. We got, um, what's the kid? He's not ro enrolling until summer, but he got that it factor for me, Singleton. Uh, Singleton. Yeah. Singleton. Like wow. Oh, my God. He got that it factor. So I'm interested to see who's going to get that other spot. Uh, opposite Ringo, man. Flipping to the other side of the ball. So we'll get to see a lot of these tight ends, man. So I know we all, you know, gonna, we want to see what Eric Gill was going to do. I think like JV said, I don't think he's here to replace George Pickens. Uh, I know a lot of people <laughs> got their assumptions about that. I think he's going to be in the tight end depth like uh, just, you know, like with Darnell and Brock. But I'm also uh, interested to see what Oscar going to do, man. Oscar is – he's same, almost the same exact size as Brock, same exact weight. If you watch his film, watch Brock film in high school, they, it's almost like you're watching the same person. So I'm like, I wanted to see if we can strike goal at that position again. So that's what I'm looking for on the offensive side of the ball. What about you, JB? Listen, man, I ain't got no problem with a full tight end set. <laughs> I'm good, good. Oh, put him out, put him out there on the field. Let him make something happen, man. I mean, you, I mean, for real though. I no, 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 wow. no, no, no fun and no pun, man. If the talent that exists in that locker room can touch the field at next year and make an impact, knowing what the guys that we already have have done. It's going to be rough on cats in the SEC as long as we got somebody back there taking the snaps that can do an adequate job of making sure that he get them the ball. Um, and then, you know, we still got AD and, you know, some of the other guys who are coming in, some new guys who might not have emerged yet. I'm, 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 I feel great about that tight end room actually being able to make everybody else on that offense better. I mean, to your point, JV, I mean, if we get some wide receivers out there that ain't stepping up, we've already seen them split Brock out wide. We've seen them split Darnell out wide. We already know Eric Gilbert can be split out wide if need be on certain down the situation. So, I mean, I know if I'm a wide receiver, I'm like, look, I'm trying to get on the field, man, so I'm going to keep it tight. What you thinking down there, CA? <laughs> I'll I tell you. I think we're just a mirror image of what's going on in the NFL, to be completely honest, because it's the same thing. When you got tight ends that can create mismatches and you have more than one, and the defense really doesn't have a chance to figure out what you're trying to do. Even if, you know, you're trying to run or throw, it, you really can't tell until they come out of the huddle and get into some type of formation. So I think that there might be a chance we got four tight ends on the field <laughs> For real, in a first and ten situation, 
and yeah. we and we're throwing the ball because defenses really don't understand what you what you might be uh, looking to accomplish. It's so much diversity in tight ends right now. There are a lot of guys in that what you might want to call a tweener size that are really athletic, yeah. really tall, and can stretch the defense. If yeah. we got three or four of them, we're gonna have to use them because they can block on that edge too. So uh, I I I have as a receiver, I would hate it because it does force you to play. It forces you to block. It forces you to be efficient in every facet of the game. But that's just competition. As a fan, I don't mind watching it as long as we're effective. You know, you got to have a signal caller. And, you know, I don't want to go into this season expecting to have the number one defense again. Uh, let me go ahead and state that off the beginning. You know, you know, I've been, this, I've been the guy rooting for 13, but that was last season. This season, I'm interested to see what it's going to take. Because with all these replacements, I can't anticipate us having the number one defense, even though I know we're talented. I need to see it first. What about you, Thad, man? Is, is the QB position what you're focused on? Or, you, you well, know, we Stetson's back, so we good. And are you looking at something else? Well, only thing, only thing that scares me about the quarterback position, but before I kind of dive into it, stand on time to that uh, question, Coach, I want to take it back off where C said. I mean, you all, you have to understand, we was able to play bullet ball last year. I mean, we really just bullet folk, man. One back, two tight end personnel, two receivers. I mean, that really just – you're able to just, you know, keep it third and short. Don't put your – you know what I'm saying? Your offense in, 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 in too many chances. And then when you take chances, they're wide open because you're generally getting one-on-one. So it's just a great advantage to have what we had last year to be able to run uh, two tight ends. And now with a guy like Gilbert, if he's able to play, I hate it, but, you know, the Y receiver, he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was. That's what I, that's what I was alluding to. Like you know, <laughs> people, that's what I was alluding to. Somebody might not be hitting the field. Fullback in trouble too. Big and, trouble. Wait, we don't got. Well, yeah, we don't got one back two tight ends. So you know, I'm just in a, in a, in a standard formation where we just had you know the, the one back two tight ends, yeah. two wide out. We don't have a yeah. fast game. But whoever playing the wide tight end, give it. But with that being said, that kind of goes back to even helping Stetson because our offense is going to have to be that much better because, yeah. once again, we can't expect to have the number one defense. I think we're going to have a very good defense, but not, you know, what we had yeah. last year. So being able to put that big body out there, more size out there to cause even more mismatches, when you just continue to run crossing patterns, wheel routes and things like that to get one-on-one, Hey, I, I like it. <laughs> we can run the ball. I, I like it. I I'm not it. mad at three tight ends. I'm not either. We had a couple of sets where we ran that last year where we had Brock, Darnell, and Fitzpatrick on the field at the same yeah. time with A.D. Mitchell. Yeah. So, I'm like, yeah. hey, man, like, like you, I think uh, C.A. alluded to, man, you, iron shoppers iron, man. You got to be on your P's and Q's, man, or you're going to be sitting there pine because we got people. We got but people. you don't know what to run on defense because you're trying to start the run because of the personnel. So, but then you got tight ends. When you tight end, oh. so much of a mismatch, and even your wife, you know, it, man. Tom, listen, I'm glad we got Ty. I think Tom Monkin is the perfect guy to handle this situation. You know what I'm saying? He can be creative in I a agree. lot, a lot of ways. You know what I'm saying? So, what you think about that? Uh, yeah. So, uh, what you think about that quarterback position? We we good, or do we need? Like, this is what I'm saying. Stetson is the starter. What I want, though, I want the backups to get ample amount of reps just in case something happened. You know what I'm saying? Because going into the season last year, once Stetson took the reins, nobody got reps in the game, no matter how bad we was blowing people out. So if Stetson had to went down, I think, honestly, you know, maybe we would have been in the pickle. I don't know. So what you think about that, That I mean, that's my only concern, is just the lack of depth. Uh, you know, once again, I, I hate it, but you know, as good as the mailman is, we always looking to replace it. <laughs> but only thing that scares me is the depth. I don't see anybody beating them out, but whoever was behind him, and I think somebody said it several times last year, I think CA said it. If he ain't ready, he ain't gonna put them in. 
That's the thing, man. We got <laughs> somebody got to be ready just in case, baby. <laughs> I need somebody. Nobody to be knows. Right. Everybody y'all. Yeah. Well, you know what? Well, that's another story, baby. Wait, wait. No, let's get into it. Let's no, get into it. That's, that's the story. story. So last year, we knew that Stetson had what it takes because we had our run game took off midseason, you know, so once Darnell came back and we know Stetson needs to play action and he can get off after the, the run is working with the play action. But we had that defense as a crutch. You know what I'm saying? I think me and E had went back and forth about this right before the Auburn game. It's like when you got a defense like we had last year, that takes some of the mental pressure off. And I think that definitely helps Stetson not make bad plays all the time because he knew it ain't all on me. You know what I'm saying? And Because we've seen when it's all on him. Now, national championship, he got down. When it was all on him in the fourth quarter, he got down. Prior to, we know what he did. So this year, we know we probably going to have a top 10 defense, but it ain't going to be like it was last year. So, I mean, what are we thinking about the situation? JV say he, he needs somebody to come beat him out. I, I think we got guys that's talented enough to do it. I just don't know if they, you know, mentally ready. Man. We got guys that's been on campus for a few years now. One guy, specifically Vandergrill. Uh, I don't have really any confidence in the fact that Beck would be the person to uh, pull it off. And, you know, outside of that, I mean, we're talking about Gunnar Stockton. I just need one of these guys to find a mojo. I need one of these guys to show me that the ball they were playing wasn't, you know, one A ball against inferior competition that got them these high ratings. I just need somebody to come in here and beat a walk-on out who – we know under the brightest lights has had a lot of stumbles. And you're right, Coach. I mean, he made the plays at the end of the game in the fourth quarter. <clears throat> um, first half, though, it could have very well been the same scenario that we done talked about time and time again. You know, if would have could have nuts and butts, I'll take how the game ended up over what we felt or could have happened. But I just need somebody to come in here and show me, you know what, you want it, you're going to take control of it. You're going to grab his handlebar. You're going to steer us down this hill pathway to this victory. And you're going to go ahead and make sure everybody know that you're the man um, from this from this point moving forward. I'm hoping we really can find some of that in one of these guys, even if it's the progression that we're working towards. So they beat him out barely, slightly, almost didn't beat him out. But then they keep continue to get better week after week, and it culminates like in a, like some type of uh, <clears throat> great, great type of. Uh, I'm losing my my track of mind right here, right now, but they just get better throughout the season, man, to the point yeah. to where we concede that they deserve it. I just need that to happen over the mail, man, and I'm forever grateful what he did. But at this point, we need somebody to um, take control of this hand the ball and steer this car down the road. Okay, so thinking like Kirby Smart. Just coached us to a national championship. Stetson had the reins the whole time. He was the guy that gave us the best chance to win. Going into the spring and the fall, Dad, wouldn't you have some kind of bias towards Stetson, even if the other guys might be showing promise that they might be able to beat him out? I just said it. No matter what the man do, we're looking to replace him. I mean, that's just something. I'm not going to, I'm not even going to even go into any more depth about it. I think the man deserves a shot. <clears throat> if uh, if it's close, it shouldn't even be no decision. Okay. Um, I go back to, you know, like I say, you know, the experience that I had last season was a good experience. I was able to debate some things with some guys and were able to learn some things, iron, sharpen iron, even though you have sparks. And something that, you know, Cal said in one episode about the tight end position, I want to see no matter how – potentially good these guys are, Stetson, ben Stetson Bennett playing at a high level. He's actually doing it. I understand mm -hmm. all the potential and all of that, but yeah. this guy's actually doing it on the field. Okay. So, okay. you know, until you in, you in, until you can show me on the field that you're that much better than him, listen, I'm, like C.A. said, like I said, I learned a lot. Hey, who am I? C.A., same question. You in Kirby Smart Shoes, you got this so-called talented three three other guys in the room. Are you giving them a fair shot, or is it just 
Stetson's our quarterback until he blow it up in the game, and and then I'll decide. <laughs> it's a tough spot. It's in my opinion, it it's really a <laughs> tough spot because, to be completely honest with you, I, I got to disagree with JV a little bit. All those stumbles that Stetson had, they don't even count anymore. Like that's that's so water under the bridge because now he's. He, he's done that. Like, that's who he is. He done that. That's all you know about Stetson is he's a national championship caliber quarterback. Yeah, he might need the number one defense, but he done that. Yeah. And if you come into any, any season, it's hard to not give him that opportunity. What my wish would be is to see these coaches put these other quarterbacks under – so much pressure up until the season so that they can at least evaluate who is ready to challenge because it's, you know, it, it will be difficult to not start Stetson, uh, regardless of how you feel about him, regardless of what he does, even in the off season, uh, to be completely honest with you, because the goal is to win week to week. And you know, he knows how to manage the game. He's a veteran in this league. I don't see how that gives you, that doesn't give you the best shot to win. There are going to be more talented guys, so someone's going to have to clearly step up and be above and beyond him talent-wise before Kirby or, or Munkin decides to put him on the field because we really don't have time to take that step back and wait for anybody. So whoever gets under center almost has to be a finished product to a degree. We're not allowing for development in the game. Sure and because really. you don't get a chance to develop in the game, all you got is spring. So I'm hoping these coaches really just – I mean, let's let Stetson chill. He really doesn't need any snaps, to be honest, in my opinion, because I know when the pressure's on the line, he'll at least step up. He might not always be able to make the throw because we've seen him make mistakes, but what I know is he'll actually make the effort. I know he's not afraid of the moment, and that's really what you are preparing these young men for. Can you handle the bright lights and, and the big stage when everything is on the line? Stetson can do that. So let me see what these other guys can do in the spring. Put these other quarterbacks under some pressure. Allow them to compete for the opportunity to compete against Stetson, to be honest with you, is what I would look at. And I'd have him on the sideline getting ready to be a coach, understanding that the job is yours. Unless you get hurt going into the season, I can't not start you. That's right. That, that's that's right. me personally. And I'm going to leave it right. You know, that's just my opinion. I think I, I just – If it's close, it ain't close. Yeah, exactly. At all. I just want to see the backups, like you said, in the spring get the majority of the snaps because we already saw Stetson do it in the fall and throughout the they season. Deserve that. He'll get the reps with the number ones, you know, and uh, so I don't think he needs a whole bunch in the spring game and in the spring. I, I think the other guys and do because this year, I feel like Stetson is going to be a bigger part of the run game if Kendall Milton can't stay healthy. Like, I hope he does, and if he does, He's our backfield. You gotta have a sure backup. You can't put him in hard way. You got exactly. Yeah. Well, see, that, see, that's, I would say that's why we got these the injuries too. That's why see, we got the these injuries too. You know, yeah. with all these injuries, don't put Stetson in there. Let, let these other guys understand and get a chance to learn on the fly with a little pressure on them, because we know we're not at hundred percent right now. Exactly. And if we do get into these situations during the season, we understand Stetson knows how to. You know, he will be more important in the running game, making sure we're in the right play understand, you know, how to offset what the defense is throwing at him. That's what we're leaning on right now. He's a bucket full of knowledge. He's got more SEC snaps than anybody. So, you know, the talent is what's going to have to beat him out. I'm hoping the coaches do what we said and just give the guys a chance to show it. Yeah. What so about a two-quarterback system? I don't own that. I think uh, I'm kind of like uh, like the old cliche, like if you got two quarterbacks, you ain't got no quarterback. Yeah, no. Because, like, when Stetson get cooking – I don't want to, I don't want you to pull them out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just so we can get we saw that in the UAB game, you know, uh or not the UAB, the South Carolina game. JT goes out there, throw two touchdowns, we bring Stetson in, he throw the pick. Now when JT got back in there, it took him a, a full drive and then we punt it for him to get his rhythm back. So in this situation, when we got Stetson in there, I don't Stetson the dude. If he the dude, he the dude. Like I don't, I just need somebody to be ready to back him up. I bet that was a stipulation to him coming back. Probably don't do me like that. Yeah, don't do. If, you, if you're gonna do that, 
I walk. I walk away. Because you know, I remember. I remember all of us talking like, about it on, on uh, right before one. Because Kirby had planned on playing Stetson and JT, and it's like I just don't. I'm not personally with that. I think it's Stetson's job is let Stetson do it. Once we get a lead, second half, third quarter, fourth quarter, now we put everybody else in. Let them. Get hey man, <laughs> Kirby go. Kirby going Kirby. So, who am I? <laughs> I don't think Kirby won't know two quarterback system either, though. He liked consistency. So, I think that's why we didn't even get to see JT a lot last year, you know, in blowout. Wins. I'm just thinking of that run element. I think is it, yeah. um, Brock, Brock's a pretty good, you know, runner and throw. Yeah. Just think about, you know, what? maybe to add that run element to the roster. To your point, Dan, maybe it's some goal line or some short yardage situation. That's what they did with Tim Tebow uh, when Chris Leak was the starter and they ready to get Natty run uh, with Urban. So I don't know, because we, we do need to protect this. <laughs> if everybody else can't beat them out, yeah. man, we, we need to protect this. And so I wouldn't mind that. So I could see that. I could see some, some special packages or something like that. I just don't want it to go like, Stetson two drives, somebody else one drive. Like, nah, bring Brock or Gunner. If, if we bring them in to run, bring them in in special situations. Don't uh, do not do it. I, I mean, a little bit more than uh, what you did with Justin Fields. I, I don't know. Maybe that's what they was trying to do with Justin Fields, but it didn't really uh, go over too well. So, I don't know. Uh, what about the coaching changes, fellas? Uh, Y'all happy with the coaching changes? Kind of so-so don't really matter because Kirby at the hand. What we feeling about that, C.A.? We got B Mac back in Athens. Man, I think you said it at the very end. I, I respect all the guys. Some of the guys I care about deeply, but it's kind of so so because Kirby's at the helm and none of it matters. You know, <laughs> so he 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 put it in place. It's really up to these guys to continue what he's built. Uh it's pressure. That's why the guys who left left. They left for greener pastures as far as a paycheck and a little less. Uh, stress on that schedule as far as that hourly day-to-day uh, -day grind. Uh, the guys that we brought in, homegrown mostly. So a lot of love for them personally. But you're still coming into a program that just came off a ship. And we we ain't happy. <laughs> we want another one. And that's so right. they know they got work in front of them. It ain't gonna, it's not easy peasy, you know, get this work done. I respect you. We're going to shake hands and kiss babies, but, you know, the, the work still got to get done. Develop. I mean, I think we're on defense, man. Like, I mean, hey, congrats to Dan Lanning, man. I personally believe Will Muschamp is a better D coordinator than Dan Lanning. That's just my personal opinion. I, that's not to take anything away from Lanning. But it don't matter. Man. It don't matter it, because, it, it, hey, it see, that's what I, exactly, that's what I was getting to. I think at the end of the day, Kirby got his fingers and, and, and imprint all over the defense. So if something go wrong, as long as we got him at the helm, it don't really matter. You know what I'm saying? So I think the same thing, like B-Mac is a great recruiter. He's a good wide receiver coach. He's shown so in yeah. Athens and other places, but we still got top on him. So uh, I'm, I'm good with that. <laughs> JB, yeah. you got anything to add to that? Or you saying? No, no man, y'all pretty much exhausted it. Kirby <laughs> at the helm. Um, and one thing I will say, though, uh, I think the Kirby, you know, he's established himself as his own man. Yeah. But one of the most impressive things that his mentor has done in his entirety of his reign has no has been no matter who has come in and who has left his establishment, his organization, his program, they come in and assimilate themselves into the culture of that program. You know, Kirby is a different man than what Saban is. He's a different coach than Saban. But if he can emulate any part of that step into my place and step into my line of thinking and my my way of doing things with coaches that come into his um or his program, man, I don't think this is gonna even matter. It ain't gonna matter because we getting we getting the players, we got the recruits, we got the facilities, we got the cash. Um, and we got the ship. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. We got the ship. I like that. <laughs> oh, man. So uh, uh, just just dealing with the spring, anything else you're looking for, Thad? Anything else you want to throw in there, topics you want to talk about? Mm. Pertaining to the spring, you know, um, just kind of piggyback off what some of the guys said earlier, you know, this is really going to be an opportunity to see some of those young guys. And not necessarily all young guys, but any of the guys who are, are, are replacing guys that were starting last year, see what they have, you know. 
you know kind of what you're going to have, especially at the quarterback position and a few other positions. So let's let some of these young guys get some reps. Yeah, yeah they're not game reps, but this is the best thing they can get right now to help prepare themselves for a game. So if those starters do go down, they'll be ready to go. So f- from the spring, I'm not looking for anything, you know, to be wild about anything. I'm just looking to be come out healthy. Like I say, see some of the young guys play and see what the depth look like because we lost a lot of big-time players. So big I really time. want to see, see what all this, you know, once again, this is where the recruiting comes in at. So I want to see what some of the, you know, these young guys got. Yeah, all the mythical championships that we talked about, but uh, it, it helps us have that depth, you know what I'm saying? We don't want to run into a Bama situation where our backups ain't ready. And from that coaching standpoint, you got to man. Again, Bobo is a plus no matter what, too. But Bobo uh, on the staff, I like Bobo on the staff because uh, I don't know, I don't know what all he can do in practice or whatever. I don't know if he can be on the field in practice, but I like him uh, to to help with the quarterbacks too. So I like his mental, I like his mental attitude. I like what he brings to the game. You know what, man? As as a guy, and most of us can say this, as a guy who sat down and had at least one ice cold bill with with, with with at least two or three of these guys, what I feel good about is I don't. I, I don't really in no circle you'll find me in is is is, the, is it a yes man syndrome, and yeah. even it, no matter where I really go and and when I hang with that group of guys, it's a self check mechanism among them that I really appreciate too. So it's not going to be a lot of butt kissing or acquiescing. I like it. You know they they'll do it the way Kirby wants it done. Acquiescing. You know all very opinionated, strong minded. Uh, but accomplished coaches within their own right. So I'm excited to have that level of talent on the coaching staff, even though I disregard it a lot because I know Coach, coach Kirby's at the helm. But uh, I'm a, just like you said, iron sharp as an iron. And, and that yeah. group of guys has always been that way amongst each other. So to have it internally now is going to be a benefit to us. I like it too because they dogs. A lot of a lot of our staff and, and, and just, <laughs> just formal, just dogs <laughs> everywhere. I'm loving it. <laughs> That's bold of Kirby, too. That's bold. It is. That's, yeah. See how it works. So we're going to yeah. see. Fellas, let me, let me just say this one thing real quick, man. Um, you know, we talked about when Kirby first came in, how different it felt down in Athens when we were heading down 316 or 78, headed down toward Athens. We all knew that uh, we spent a lot of time. We, you know what I'm saying, we spent a lot of sweat, a lot of blood, a lot of tears down there, man. We did what we could do. Uh, personally to try to put that program into a, a better position. And when Kirby came home, man, it, it definitely felt like home. Man, you got guys down there right now, and it's it's it not only does it feel like home, but it smell like it feel like when you walk to the front door and you got that apple pie bacon and the cookies where uh, sitting on top of the kitchen table. Um, you know what I'm saying? I was even talking to one of my so my my family uh signed with the dogs, one of my cousins back home, Raquez, my elder beard. Uh, old lineman out of Aniston, and when I was talking to old dog, yes sir, yes sir. I mean Alabama making a hard push to get him. Get a big boy though. I'm I'm loving with I'm I'm hoping we keep keep our uh, uh, paws on it. Okay. Um, but you know what he was talking about, like what he felt, man. I could 100 identify with. He just said, man, listen, when I came down there, and when I was walking through those halls, and when I walked, you know, those streets of Athens, and when I walked on that campus. It was home. Like, I ain't signed yet with him. I ain't, you know, did it officially, but it was home. It felt like the guys that was in that locker room were my brothers. And mm. Kirby is showing guys what family does and what family do. Right? That's true. He's showing guys yeah. right now how Georgia takes care of its own. Yeah. And people ain't really you know, touched on that fact yet. Not 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 as not as simple as the message is, but George take care of his own. You know, yeah. Bobo had his issues. Look at the and staff. Was, huh? <laughs> Just look at, look at the staff. <laughs> <laughs> hey. hey, look, that's what I'm saying. Look at look at the staff. Georgia takes care of his own, man. And it ain't like people are slouches, but Georgia takes care of his own. And when we do that, we become even stronger. That's a strength and a powerful message 
along with being able to have that chip cache to walk into somebody's living room and say, listen, this guy standing next to me, I played with it. This guy standing next to me, you know what I'm saying, walked through them same hallways I did years before I did, yeah. years after I did. Now we recruiting you to come into this family and create this brotherhood that we all done established because we take care of our own. I Along think, with the fact that we got cash and NIL money, and we gonna take care of our own. I so, think that's good recruiting too, JV. <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> Man, like, look, let me tell you what. The staff already were hellacious recruiters. Yeah. Without being what you see right now and without the NIL. Come on, man. Come on. One thing I want to add to that, man, because I do think is, you know, that family atmosphere speaks a lot to what Kirby's had a chance to reinforce and what we all know already is true. But, you know, I think what happened at the combine was extremely big for Georgia and the program because it, it not only showed the level of talent. I mean, that's a conversation in itself. When you look at how those young men performed, yeah, each and every guy got better and improved their draft stock, regardless of what you thought he was going into yep. the combine. But the character that they showed, the camaraderie that they showed, how they supported one another, man, that's one thing that you can't fake. And I think that the, you know, this this staff has done a great job in recruiting high caliber kids that they bond with each other. You know, that happens. That doesn't happen uh, by mistake. You know, that's you got to build that in. You have to nurture that. And the guys have to care about one another and, and really understand what we're all sacrificing. So I was really excited just to see that piece just at the combine, how those guys interacted and helped to really just sell the program, just innate, just being themselves and understanding you can come to Georgia, be yourself, get better, work hard, and it'll pay off on the back end. I felt that too uh, when I was watching the combine after uh, Trayvon, uh, I think, ran his 40. Jaron Jordan Davis and the Kobe both like ran out onto the field. About their drill. Exactly. Yeah, about, about their drill. drill. I was like, dog, that's that's big time. Like recruits watching the come by and see that. It's like, okay, so when they say family, like y'all said, it's real. It's not just it you know, have numbers. It do. It, does. it do. It does. And, and not to mention they was taking over at the interviews too. I mean, we, we was 14 too. deep. <laughs> we was 14 deep at the come by, dog. <laughs> Like, they was taking that over. Does matter. <laughs> numbers, you right, that numbers. I'm telling you, man. So, I man, we got a lot of things going for us, man. Uh, hopefully, we can sway your uh, family to uh, come on down to Athens. Uh, I know you say Alabama making a big push for him, but hopefully, he get there and, uh, in them in between in that three. Was it uh, uh, the three oh six? That area code seven oh six. Okay, okay. Well, he he, he didn't already committed to the dogs. I'm just saying we got to hold on to him. But at the Dang end of the day, man, like I tell him, you know, listen, I don't put no family pressure on you, baby, but I'm just letting you know that UGA was the best decision I ever made in my life. So <laughs> put that where you want to put it. Hey, hey. Like said, what you felt was real. Hey, what listen, real. I'm going to take, I'm gonna take <laughs> this little time to plug my nephew, man. My nephew is class of 2024. Number one wide receiver in South Carolina. He is getting okay. recruited by Georgia. He ain't got the offer. He ain't got the offer officially. I'm, I ain't trying to put no pressure on nephew, but he know. We just you know call his name, and we. I want to know his name. Maisie yeah, Benny Junior. He's the number one Thank wide you. receiver oh. in South Carolina oh, in 2024. Oh, man, come on. you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. On, so man. you know, we we gonna try to go down. When we go to Athens this weekend, man, he gonna get to see how it is. You know, South Carolina on him real hard, but you know, I know Kirby can do. Say, can did Dad go to? Okay. Yeah, so gotta, yeah, yeah. So you know, uh, you gotta keep an eye on him. Okay. Yeah, yeah, man. You know, Bima, hey Bima, down there trying to battle with Dabo, man. He trying to keep all the top talent in state, so they got a little jump on us. But hey, it's all right. Tramper a pole to hit bad friend. <laughs> so you know, we got to transfer portal. Hey, it, it don't it don't hurt that his mama and his sister are dog fans. So you know, when we get down there this weekend, man, he'll he'll see all that red and black, man, live and in any color. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I told him, I, I, hey, I told him, I say yes. Y'all had y'all fun, man. The big dogs on the porch now, man. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So, man, Real hey, man, good, good first spring show, man. We're going to do another show, man, at the end of spring to wrap this thing up. Uh, start talking about the season. Y'all start thinking about what y'all think this, this SEC going to look like. Uh, if we can do it again, get back to the SEC championship, 
playoffs, those three games that they had references all the time, mate. Can we do it again? That'll be – we'll do a spring wrap-up and then yeah. start talking about that schedule, man. So be ready with Hope that. We'll get Anybody? a live show in. We'll get uh, that. We we'll get us a live show so we can get some of the Dog Nation in here to tell us what they thinking about the upcoming 2022 season. So anybody got anything else to, before we wrap this thing up? Might have to go live on G Day, but we'll figure it out. But uh, hey man, I enjoyed it, man. Enjoyed <laughs> hey man, hey, good to be back, fellas. Hey, good <laughs> to be back, national champs. You know what I'm saying? That's how that feel right there. And for my boys not here, Cool Cal, E Rob, C Rob. You know what I'm saying? We got Thad, CA, JV, and I'm Coach I, Fanatic. We out of here. Peace. Oh, dog.